Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review, the Digitally Digested segment, for the Vio SX12. Now, this is a currently, I think it's priced at around a thousand US dollars. You have a 12 inch full HD display, a Core i5 chipset, at least in this review unit, uh, paired with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD. And performance is very good. Build quality is solid. This is made in Japan. If you forgot, Vio still exists. It is no longer part of Sony, hasn't been for years, but they still make quality products. And you're looking at a, basically it's a carbon fiber build, which will probably remind you of days past when you may have owned a Vio once upon a time. And very lightweight. And as I mentioned in my, wasn't a real unboxing because there was no box, it's a review unit. It's all about the ports. It's all about the IO. Okay, Vio, all about I.O. Because you've got, you know, a full-size SD card slot, which, boy, do I welcome wholeheartedly. You've got some nice connectivity here in the form of Type-C and USB uh, 3.0 uh, with, uh, of course, a Type-A connector there, HDMI, Ethernet, and you actually have, you, you're seeing this properly, uh, <laughs> VGA output. And that's something that you're not going to find on most laptops. Ultrabooks or anything else. I mean, Vio covers all their bases so that this is truly a business machine, but it's also for people that don't want to compromise on the I.O. Two more USB ports, headphone jack, that also doubles as a microphone jack. Um, and that's your, I believe that's your Kensington lock and the power port. Now, battery life, I wish I could tell you that it's all roses, uh, but you're looking at realistically five to six hours. So very similar, that's at best. Uh, that's very similar to the SX14. Personally, I like the size of this better than the SX14, but the SX14 is only a little bit larger, a little bit heavier, and it's a more powerful machine that does have a 4K display. I do not believe the SX12 comes with a 4K display, and I'm not sure how many of you would want a 12-inch 4K display. I know I wouldn't be against it, but inherently, I'd be more apt to go for the 14-inch. Now, the part that's really nice is the design on the hinge because that lifts up the bottom of the laptop in order to make sure it stays cool. And this is something, by the way, that you've got both with the SX14 that I reviewed in the past and here with the SX12. And build quality is just really nice. I, I remember on the SX14, my screen was a little bit pinched. This one, not, so no bleed here. Uh, I believe it's an IPS panel, but, you know, viewing angles, maybe it's not. Uh, I'm not 100% on that. Uh, the SX14, I couldn't really get a confirmation either from Vio, but nonetheless, quality product all around. And you might be saying, why would I want this for a thousand? Because it has everything that generally a more expensive machine in terms of IO would ask for. You may be saying, well, the chipset, the RAM, all that pairing, it's a lot of money. I get it. You're paying for Vio build quality, Vio craftsmanship. If you don't care about that, this product's not for you. Now, do I wish this touchpad was a little bit larger? Sure. Do I need Apple's gigantic thing? No, I don't need that. That's, that's kind of ridiculous. If I need that, I need a mouse. It's really that simple. And most times I do need a mouse. So a mouse is still necessary. So this could be larger, but I'm happy with it. My real nitpick with this is on the battery life because it has everything you could possibly want in a mobile, you know, ultra mobile computer that's lightweight and is a legitimate laptop. The only thing it's missing is the battery life. And I mean, web browsing, all those things, it does well. So whether I go to what is a, a favorite for a lot of you out there, see how many people rage about this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I mean, no touch screen, but you know, the touchpad works well. You can see my pinch to zoom there. It's doing its tricks. And it just, it, it runs really well. I mean, what do you want? It's an eighth gen processor and Stays relatively cool. I mean, it, it can get hot, obviously, if you put it under a lot of stress, but it does what it should. There's some audio playing. Speakers are not great, but what do you expect on a 12-inch Ultrabook like this? Not much. And, um, you know, in terms of, let me just change my lighting here a little bit. It's starting to look a little purple, huh? Overall, I mean, the laptop, I think, is definitely... A very nice machine. I mean, typing on it, the keys don't have as much travel as a lot of other brands out there. I know right now all the Surface products, of course, announced last week, and there's a lot of hype with that. I think this will kind of get lost in the mix, and it shouldn't because Vio does a good job. They deliver. The color accuracy on this screen is not fantastic, but I don't think most of the people that are buying this 
are buying it for color accuracy. This is about portability um, and functionality, and it delivers on those things. But if you do need anything that's color critical with the display, then this is not the right uh, you know, machine for you because it's not going to deliver in that regard. It just, it will not do it. You want to avoid that at all costs. I mean, because the accuracy isn't even close to what the majority of laptops have out there. But overall, very hard to beat this. Really? Republicans are even calling for this. Anyway, uh, it's really hard to beat this because you are getting a very well-balanced machine at a price that, again, some people may think is a lot, but most, I think, are going to see this as, you know, value-oriented considering that it's Vio. I mean, Vio has a history of being very expensive. I mean, would I want a video edit on this? Absolutely not. No. You know, images? Sure. I think you could do that. That's not a problem, but video editing? No, I don't want a video edit on this. And that's where I'd be looking at the SX14, even though that's still, you know, a low voltage processor, it's a little bit beefier. And uh, you also had, do have a 4K display and you have better color accuracy. Battery life is a wash. It has quick charge. It's not quick charge like we just saw announced. You're not going to get 80% an hour like you will with a Surface product. So, I mean, it's really a matter of what you're looking for. But, you know, a Surface product does not have I.O. like this. In fact, it has zero I.O. I mean, you're lucky that the Surface Pro still has a micro SD card slot. None of the, you know, the Surface Pro X, which is running on ARM. I mean, like, those things are experimental. This is not experimental. This is anything but experimental. This is a legitimate, bona fide laptop that's going to perform exactly as you expect it to. And it's lightweight. And some people don't like the carbon fiber. I've always liked it. It just means that this is more flexible. In fact, that's all of the tests I get from Vio show the flexibility of this display and, and how, you know, this, it has flex for a reason. It's so that it doesn't break if it gets flexed. They've tested the crap out of this. And, uh, you know, they've, they've done a good job. I may have just scratched my desk with it. That's how durable it is. Go figure. No damage on the Vio. <laughs> um, I didn't expect any. So the desk, even though it's wood, more susceptible than carbon fiber. Surprise, surprise. But again, this is all about the port selection and flexibility and not having a machine where you're ready to get something done and then you say, oh, I can't do it. It just, it, I don't, oh, I don't have that. This machine has it all, which you wouldn't expect because it's such a little booger, but it does have it all, including that. It really does. Uh, the webcam is fine. It's adequate. It's one thing where I wish all manufacturers would step up their game. I mean, we've got cameras and phones that outperform. Why not deliver a webcam that can, that's competent? They all kind of suck is what I've noticed. But overall, the, you know, you've got a fingerprint scanner. You have all the input output that you could possibly want. Even good old VGA, if you want to hook it up to a monitor uh, that's from 100 years ago or a projector, that's more likely. That's really the real world uh, use for you, for those of you that are wondering. But then again, you know, it's, it's really up to you how you want to use this and in what capacity. And I think that they've done a really nice job uh, with it. The only thing, as I mentioned, battery, and I do wish the screen had a little better color accuracy. I wish there was a 4K option. I think originally they were entertaining a 4K option. It just never happened. So, Vio doing what they do best, making portable, durable machines that have all the I.O. It's just ironic that it rhymes, that you could possibly want in one package. And again, kudos to Vio for doing that. Uh, I would personally go with the SX14, but it's a lot more money than the SX12 with very similar performance. And if you don't care about the 4K display, if you don't care about the color accuracy, then the SX12 is the way to go because, I mean, it's just, I love the size, I got to tell you. It makes all the tablets look kind of bulky just for comparison purposes. I'm going to pull out the, the Tab S6, which I have right here. And, I mean, obviously the Tab S6 is considerably smaller, 10 and a half inch display versus the 12 and a half you have here. But when it comes to you know, how much space it's going to occupy in your bag. Again, there's a big footprint difference, but this is a real computer. This is a wannabe, a very good wannabe, but a wannabe. And I feel like a lot of the Surface products that are about to hit shelves, other than the Surface Pro 7, I mean, I'm not, the laptop is a laptop, no question about that, but you're kind of juggling things and you're missing all of these things. And that's kudos courtesy to Apple, who made it chic to take away features and charge more. And that's the world we're living here in here in 2019. So it's really up to you 
whether or not you feel that price of entry is appropriate for what you're getting. I think that Vio has done a good job here in terms of making something that competes and is not trying to overlap or capture the same market, but rather the opposite. They're trying to appeal to a whole nother class of user that is not looking to be flashy, is not looking for something that uh, is the, necessarily the latest news. They want something that's going to get the job done, is durable, and it just it puts up rather than you know making a mess. You know, put up or shut up. Vio does that. And I do still give them a lot of credit for making this thing in Japan. I mean, name another laptop made in Japan. You can't. There isn't. There's a reason. So there is, uh, there's value to that, and uh, Vio builds it in. And you're paying for that, whether you go with this or the SX14. You are paying for that. So uh, personally, I'm holding out to see what they have in store because I want something that's going to get closer to that 8 to 9 hour battery life with a 4K screen. So the, the revision of the SX14 is probably where my heart will be. I still wish they would, you know, come out with uh, a replacement, a follow-up to the Duo, the, the Vio um, tablet that I had. Um, that really was my favorite machine, color accuracy. It was designed, you know, the studio was designed for professionals to have color accuracy and everything in terms of input-output, just like these machines. But they never came back with that. So I hope that we get another studio-based product that is for creative pros, kind of like the Asus uh, ZenBook Pro Duo. I think that's the direction I wish they would go in because they have the craftsmanship, they have the capability to execute that really well. But that's pretty much it. It's a solid little, you know, workhorse. Just remember, it is an 8th Gen i5. There are already 9th and 10th Gen products on the market. So... How much they bench differently and how much that's going to impact your workflow is, is important. And I think clearly if you can get a 10th gen product for the same price as this, this becomes a tough sell. You really have to love the, uh, all the additional I.O. and the build quality overall. Otherwise, the Vio just is not the right product for you. It's not who they're trying to capture. They want business users that are tired of Lenovo's, you know, drecky look. It's not a unique thing. It, it's looked the same for... And that's not a knock against Lenovo. I mean, it's the brand. And that's why Vio has stuck to their formula. This looks old too. But this is a much cooler, much better um, look than any Lenovo has ever sported. I mean, this was always the brand that I stuck with. And I'm glad they're still around. I just wish they had a little more capital because I know they would get creative. I know they would be doing things that would make the, the duo that... You know, Microsoft announced the Neo, rather, not the Duo, that's the phone. But the Neo, I know that Vio could outdo that. If they had the capital, if they had the push. Hey, Microsoft, you listening? I might want to scoop Vio. No, I'm kidding. I don't think Vio wants to be scooped. Who knows? I don't know enough. You know, but very nice little machine, and I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people. It's been out for a while. But again, the price point, all these new 10th gen products, that is the struggle, isn't it? Do you want the latest hardware or do you want all the I.O. that you could possibly get in the smallest package you could possibly get? That's what the SX12 represents. Again, better battery life and a 4K screen would have been beautiful. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.